Happy Saturday, everybody. Meteorologist Hunter Force here. Welcome to Hurricane Hub Live, where we track everything that's going on in the trap tropics Monday through Sunday. And here we are on our Saturday evening, and we have a tropical wave out there that has emerged off the coast of Africa just recently. And, you know, we've been tracking this the last couple of days, and those chances of development have gone up and up over the last few days. And as of the eight o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center, we went up from a 50% chance of development now to a 60% chance within the next week or so. So you'll see this X here where that tropical wave is, which is just an area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. And then you have this line and then this orange blob. So there's kind of some Shear and some Saharan dust in this area, dry air. It's not a really conducive area for something tropical to form quickly. But over the next couple of days, it's going to continue to push towards the west. So that's why they have this you know, line here. And then this blob kind of shows where those chances of development are possible. So this X here where that tropical wave is will continue to push off towards the west and you'll see we have a little bit of some convection uh, well to the south of the Cape Verde Islands. But just like I was saying before, this is a classic tropical wave, a very uh, area of very disorganized showers and thunderstorms. But this is what can lead to tropical systems. So right now there is some Saharan dust in this area um, and that'll stay with us through the weekend as we get into Monday. But as it continues to push off towards the west, that Saharan dust lessens a bit. So it becomes a bit more favorable for some of that development, but we'll continue to see some more of that dust um, along the African coast. But as we take a look at the European model over the next couple of days, we go through the weekend, we go into the start of the work week, not a whole lot. Here we are on Tuesday, starting to see a little bit of some development here. As we get into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you're definitely starting to see something uh, develop with the European model. Now I'll have to say, so this is next Sunday. So this is a little bit over a week away. This is similar to the last model run for the European in terms of location, but not in terms of intensity. Uh, the latest update, at least with this model, has a little bit weaker compared to the last model run, which is some good news. But of course, there's not even a low pressure yet. So the models have a hard time kind of depicting on when and where it'll go, how strong it will be. Um, so these models will continue to change. But in this time and day, you kind of have to look at the trends and the trends, at least with the European model, we're taking it westward, closer to the islands, a little bit further north of um, Puerto Rico. Uh, but with the GFS model, it does something similar, not a whole lot going on within the next couple of days. But by Tuesday and Wednesday, you start to see something forming here in the main development region. Now, the GFS model, the last couple of model runs were kind of like, eh, maybe something will form. And if it does, it's going to be kind of weak. But at least with this most updated model, it does have it a little bit stronger as we head into the middle and end of the upcoming work week. But it takes it a little bit more north than the European model and then kind of has it going out to sea. At least a lot of the models have it going out to sea. But the European lately has been taking it a little bit more westward. But as we look at the model comparison, heading into Wednesday, they're in good agreement on location. Intensity-wise, right now, the European model a little bit weaker. And then by the end of the week, which is what you normally see, they kind of split on where, on where this system could go. The GFS model takes it more towards the north, while the European model has it more towards the west. Now, hopefully, if something does form, it takes more of that the American direction, even though maybe could be stronger, at least hopefully it would go out to sea. But of course, it is still very early on. It's still only a tropical wave. Um, so a lot of these models are going to shift and change like they have been with a lot of these areas uh, throughout the entire season. Um, but it's just still something we have to watch. What we do know is that the American and European model are saying something is likely to develop. So that's what, you know, we just have to watch for the next couple of days. But it, well, we really just have to continue waiting and seeing 
on where it actually will go. Until we actually get a well-defined low pressure system, that's when the models can really tap it and get more of a better idea on what's going to happen. Um, but right now, this is kind of what the models are saying when you look at the trends, that something will likely develop over the next couple of days and will track towards the west-northwest. But how far west and how far north is the million dollar question right now. But even once we get past that and we head towards the end of the month, September 24th through the 30th, right now the Climate Prediction Center saying, you know, there's a lower chance we could see some more development as we get towards the end of the month in the main development region. Could we see another tropical wave coming off after this one? Um, as we get towards the end of September, that has a chance of development. Sure, right now there's a low chance and even a chance we could see some development uh, in the Gulf and also the Caribbean Sea as well. Some models um, have been saying we could see a little bit of development, you know, over the next week or two weeks um, in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mex or Gulf of America. So just something we have to watch. Uh, certainly as we get towards the end of the month. So it could be active at the end of September, even into October as well. Can't let your guard down, down even though we are past the peak of the hurricane season, which was just three days ago, September 10th. Right now it's September 13th. So past the peak, just a tad, but could still see a lot of activity in the end of September and through October as well. And then it really drops down by the end of October into November. And the season goes to uh, November 30th. But so far, it's been a relatively quiet season. We've only had one hurricane. We've, but it was a major hurricane. It was a Cat 5, Hurricane Aaron, which went in between Bermuda and uh, the East Coast. But we've had Andrea, Barry, Chantel, Dexter, and Fernand, which have all been tropical storms. Then we had Aaron, which was the first hurricane and the first major hurricane, Cat 5. Next name on the list will be Gabrielle. Then after that, we have Umberto, Imelda, Jerry, and Karen. Hopefully we don't get that far, but you never know. Could see some more activity as we get towards the end of the month and into October as well. All right, coming up on HHL, we're going to take a look at the Eastern Pacific. There is some more activity going on. We just recently had Tropical Storm Mario. That kind of fell apart, but now there's more areas to watch. I'll keep you updated on that. And then we have some Hurricane Hub Live trivia. That's coming up after the break. Welcome back to Hurricane Hub Live. I'm meteorologist Hunter Force. Let's take a look 
at the Eastern Pacific. There's kind of a lot of action going on here, a lot of convection. Um, you know, from the south of Cabo down through the eastern Pacific, of course, a lot of warm waters here, cooler off towards the north. But we had tr Tropical Storm Mario just the other day form rather quickly, but then it fell apart quickly as well. Now it's just a post tropical system, uh, but still a lot of convection in this area. And there's a couple areas we're watching one actually just to the south of Hawaii right now a low chance about 20% over the next week or so but expected to continue to stay off to the south um, as we head throughout the next couple of days so not a whole lot to worry there so that's some good news but still two more areas here off the coast of Mexico um, part of the remnants of Mario right now about a 40% chance of development over the next seven days that's that area here in orange but if something was to develop looking like it'll push off towards the west and enter an area that may not be as favorable for development. So there's that. And then we have another area here just off the coast of Mexico. Right now, only about a 20% chance of development within the next seven days. So a few areas to watch here in the eastern Pacific, but no named systems out there right now. But they've had a good amount this season already. They've gone from Alvin all the way to Mario, which just happened. They had a hurricane before that, Lorena and Kika, which um, was just north of Hawaii, ended up being a category four storm, but started to weaken as it got closer to the islands and stayed just off to the north, which was great news. But they've had Eric, Flossie, Gail, Henriette, all of those hurricanes. So they've had quite a few this season. Next name on the list is Narda, Octave, and then Priscilla. All right, let's take a look at Hurricane Hub Live Trivia. It's not tri trivia. I think I said trivia, but it's trivia. It's not Hurricane Hub Live without some trivia. So let's take a look at our question. What is the minimum ocean water temperature required for a hurricane to form? Is it 60 degrees, 70, 80 degrees, or 90 degrees? Well, the answer is that we'll find out tomorrow, Sunday evening on Hurricane Hub Live. We'll be right back here tomorrow at 8 o'clock. I appreciate you joining me tonight and enjoy the rest of your evening.